All right, what's up guys? Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to set up the turntable in Blender. So we, we left the last video without me showing you the finish because it takes all night to render and I had to go to bed. Let's jump right into it. I'll show you the images that I have and then we're going to start doing the turntable in Blender. So let's jump to my Mac screen. Um, so I might do, I might actually do two turntables, one of this and then maybe one with like a darker so I can like merge the two. So this is fairly high res. So if I go to this little camera here, uh, oh, you go to the little printer here. So C2480 by 3400. So that's very large. So that would take a long time to render. And I don't have the capabilities for that. So we're just going to do 1080 by 1450. Yeah, so we're just going to do that one. It's smaller, but it's not, you know, it's, it's a decent size. So we're going to do that. It looks like it's... Oh, here we go with the fireworks again. You just can never catch a break. Uh, sorry if my voice is a little weird. I can't hear myself because I have noise canceling on. Uh, so I apologize for the fireworks and also my f computer fan is probably going to come on. Okay, so we set the resolution. 1080 by 1450. That's decent. I always change the frame rate to 60. If I scroll down, this is the folder that it's going to go into. Oh, I forgot to show you the things. So this is... Uh, close to the one that we're going to do now darker and I have is some other things glowing like this is his like private mode I should have made those two top things the same color but that's okay this one looks so good this is just a darker random one that I did and there's a white one so yeah I just like having fun with it and kind of doing different colorways let me make sure I have all the lights on that I want on looks like they're all on Okay, so we have this box here. Let me make this a little bit smaller right now. So this is called an empty. So I'm going to do shift A to add. And you can add an empty. So this is a cube. And if you add it by default, it's just going to be right in the middle, obviously. Um, the only thing I did was move it up so that it's like, just so I can see it better. It doesn't really matter. So this box is an empty, which you see right here. So this is the empty. This is everything that I want to go inside that empty i'm actually going to turn this this light on as well just so i can bring it into into the empty so anything i anything i want to spin to rotate uh, i want to move that into the empty so i'm going to select all of these and then i'm going to select the empty so i'll just uh, press uh, shift and select the empty last and then command p and object keep transform so now all these things are inside the empty uh, even though they don't look like it so i'm going to take all of these and i'll just kind of move them inside this little turntable folder and they should just disappear okay yeah so they're all here so if i turn this off everything should disappear or if i turn this off everything should disappear okay so here's the empty. So now all we have to do is the empty to rotate 360 degrees and everything within it that we just added in it is also going to rotate 360 degrees. So we want to come down here to the timeline. You can turn, you can tap this little thing and you have all these things. So you want to go to the timeline. The timeline is where you put keyframes. So if we scroll over, I can make this a little bit longer. And we have 1 to 140. I'm going to do 250. So we'll do 250. And we'll go to 1. Or, yeah, we'll go to 1. So this is where it'll start. So I want to put a keyframe down. So I'm going to go to rotation and hit I. So it turns all of them, all of them yellow. So now we have a keyframe here. So let's go to the last frame and go to Z and I'll put in 360 Hit enter but it's see it's orange so now I have to hit I to lock in that keyframe so now you can see that anytime I spin it it's just going to be it's just going to move all the way uh, it's going to do a complete circle so that's looking good okay so that's honestly that's pretty much uh, the gist of doing the turntable. I'm going to hit Z and go to solid just so we can see it. 
Let me do. Here we go. So now I'm going to hit spacebar and it's going to run through how it's going to spin. So see how it's slowing down and starting up. Um, it's like easing out and easing in. So I think, I don't know if I want to keep that. It's kind of cool. But I think I just want it to spin regularly. So I'm going to go here. And this is actually the same kind of window. So all you do is you hit here and then each of these windows can have any of these things. Um, it's all the same. They're all just windows. This is all the same window except for this has the 3D viewport. This also has the 3D viewport. But you can kind of like move these around and bring new ones. It's kind of confusing at first, but they're all just windows. So we'll tap here and we'll go to graph editor. So as long as you have the empty that empty box selected is going to show the movements right here. So just select them all. I don't really know much. Of, I mean, I know the things that I know, but this is all very confusing. So now I'm going to right click or double finger click here, interpolation mode and go to linear. So that just means that it's just linear. It's not going to ease out or ease in. So now if I hit it, it's just going to spin at one speed. It's kind of fast too. Like I wonder if, uh, let's see if we put it to 300. So we put it to 300 and then I just take these keyframes. I can make it the whole thing smaller and move these over. Let's see. That's like a nice speed. It's a better speed. So let's do, we'll do that. We'll do to 300. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. So now it's saved. Everything looks good. Everything looks ready to go. And now we can just uh, export our render. So we would just go here and render animation. And I'll show you how it starts, but I'm going to stop it because I think I'm going to do some other things and just let, let it run overnight. So we hit render animation and it's the first frame. Oh, the samples. I forgot to change the samples. That's why I always run an animation. So the samples, I need to change from 250 to just 50. Otherwise, it'll just take way too long. So now we'll render animation. And the reason why I'm rendering this way, you render frames, because this can render, this will just rate, this will render each frame, and each frame will go into the folder. And then eventually I'll just bring that into Final Cut Pro and I'll edit that into the moving image. But what's good about that is if uh, something happens and Blender crashes or whatever, all those frames that are already done are already saved. So I can go in and if it crashes at 75, I can go back into it and just change the start one to 75 and then it'll export 75 all the way onto 300. Um, so yeah, obviously you can see it takes a long time to render out each frame. So I'm gonna have to let this run overnight. Tomorrow I will show you the final. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will show you the animation. I'll show you the turntable in the next video. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I think I'm on my honeymoon right now. I'm either getting married or on my honeymoon. So there's gonna be, I have these videos scheduled. So we'll see. So there should be, next time you see me in about a week or so, there should be a ring on this hand. All right, keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.